James Dellingpole, many of you will know as uh, a man who uh, made a lot of running with the UEA uh, 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 Climate Gate uh, uh, emails. He's a regular blogger and uh, writer for The Telegraph. He writes for The Spectator. He's been a rock critic. He is the, a winner of um, what one might think of, and I don't think James would disagree, a sort of pretty ultra-right wing prize recently called the Bastia Prize after... What, ultra-right wing, what, meaning, meaning small ultra, government free ultra, market? Ultra, yeah. free, ultra that's, free market. That's like almost fascist, isn't it? Ultra like free market. big government. Ultra yeah, free Tony. market. Let me, let me correct that and say, ultra free Thank market you. prize, the Bastia Prize. Jesus, if the moderator's like this, what hope do we uh, stand? Uh, so, sorry, ultra free market, not ultra right wing, and that I hope that James will stand Jeez. behind. And, um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome yeah. James Dellingpole. Has everybody been having a very nice festival? Yeah. Good, I'm very glad to hear it because I love coming to uh, rock festivals. Um, I've never been to one as spot as this, I must say, but I've been to quite a few Glastos and uh, I was at Latitude a couple of weeks ago. And the thing I love about these occasions is it's like being in a, a playground for grown-ups where life is condensed into the, the basic key questions. Should I have a cup of coffee? Should I have a cider? Should I roll a cheeky jazz woodbine? Should I... <laughs> Go to see Laura Marling. Should I do all, all four? Or if I'm feeling really wacky, maybe I'll come and sit in a tent to watch people debate about eco warriors and stuff. I, I thank you for making that decision. It's nice Pull to have the mic down a bit. It's in front of your nose. Sorry. Yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Just Is that saying, else is ab saying absolutely. Cool. Thank you, sir. Um, well, in the spirit of peace and love, which I so love about festivals, I would like first to take issue, if you don't mind, with a rather horrid, I think, nature of the uh, debate topic. Don't let the eco-warriors spoil your fun. I think this is slightly unfair, because what it implies is that there is a division in the world between, on the one hand, evil, evil Jeremy Clarkson-style bastards in their 4 by 4s running over polar bears, uh, destroying nature because they don't care, because their only priority is having fun. And on the other side, that there are these noble eco-warriors fighting for truth and justice. This is not a caricature that I recognise <coughs> in the slightest. When I look at a beach, I don't think to myself, God, you know what would really improve that beach? If it were covered with an oil slick. And maybe a sea otter floating in the distance going, eh, 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 eh as it drowned in, in, in oily gunk. I don't see a turtle laying her eggs on the beach and when she crawls back into the sea, I don't think, right, now the bitch is gone, I can go and kill all those eggs. I don't think to myself, what I must do, because I'm a fun-loving guy, is use up all the world's scarce resources so that future generations don't have any because I don't care. This, unfortunately, though, is a caricature I'm very used to. It's one that I find very much, as a so-called denier, is used by people on the other side of the debate. I don't actually very much like these ad homs, because I think what they do is they take away from the main issue, which is ideas, not about personalities. I think, actually, if you looked into it, you would find that all of us, on both sides of this panel, ultimately want the same thing. We want a cleaner world. We want nice beaches. We don't like pollution. We don't want a shit world to be inherited by our children and grandchildren. We all share this premise, okay? Where we differ is over our approach to these problems. Where we differ is in the means, not the ends. And this is where I take issue with people like Catherine and Martin. I don't want to make it personal. And, uh, and may I say, I really don't. And, uh, and, and if you find them, as I believe you probably will, indulging in ad homs and cheap shots, like the man we, one we heard from that gentleman with the handbag just now, 
I think you should award yourself 10 points, 10 points per ad hom. And you won't find that many points on, on, on my side. I don't know what Christopher's going to do. He might be a bit cheekier. Um, let me give you one example of the kind of thing of wrong ideas which I think are being done in the name of environmentalism, which are actually doing more harm than good. Doing more harm, I might say, to the very thing these people are trying to protect, the environment. I'm talking about wind farms. Now, if, if it were really the case that unless we adopted renewable energy like wind farms, the world would be destroyed and all the baby polar bears would die. If that were really true, I would be the first to be having a wind farm on my roof. But when you look at the facts of wind farms, you find that certain things, that certain un un inconvenient truths happen to be so. Wind farms do not replace one iota of conventional energy. And the reason for that is very simple. The power produced by wind farms is so intermittent that they constantly have to be um, backed up with conventional power stations working on something called spinning reserves. So they have to, be, have to be kept on a kind of low humming operational level ready for when the wind farms don't produce wind, which is actually quite, quite often. We're told that wind farms are good for the environment, are going to save the world. Well, for a start, they use up uh, rare earth minerals which are extremely poisonous and, and are, are mined under the most appalling conditions in China. Maybe you think that the world doesn't include China. Things that happen in China aren't a problem. I would suggest they are our problem. You also have the problem of the fact that wind farms chop up birds, they chop up bats, and they destroy views. They destroy the very thing that we so love about our countryside, the magnificent views of our landscape. I think that this is an example of a, something that's being done in the name of saving the environment, making the world a better, cleaner place, which is actually making it a worse place. I can give you plenty of can other I examples. Can stand up and make a point, please? No, I can, no. no, no you'll I can give you plenty time. of other you'll examples. Time. You'll have your time. Biofuels. Okay. Biofuels, which again are, are supposed to be saving us from, from carbon emissions. What they're actually doing is using up land which could be growing crops to feed. Growing crops to feed uh, the people in the third world. So they're actually creating starvation in the third world. Um, it's, uh, it's a sweeping statement, it's also a true one. Mm. I would like to um, conclude by um, giving you another example from history, which is that of the, uh, the River Thames. Up until about 1850, the River Thames was known as the Great Stink because of the evil effluence which was floating past, the rotting corpses, the, the, the untreated sewage and so on. Then Joseph Bazalgette built the Thames in embankment and created uh, this newer, cleaner river. Much cleaner, I mean the river the Thames is much cleaner now than it was two or three hundred years ago. Why did this happen? Why was the Thames made cleaner? It was not because there were organisations in 1850 like Greenpeace campaigning for it. It was because the Victorians were uh, a very uh, forward-looking, su uh, economically successful uh, people. Uh, the tax rate was much lower than it is now. The British Empire was expanding. Industrial civilization was growing. The reason they could make the, the Thames cleaner was because they had the money to spend on improving the environment. Environment, a cleaner environment and capitalism can move hand in hand. You do not need to impose artificial barriers. We, we, we all want the world to be a cleaner, better place, and we can do that by working with capitalism, not against it. Thank you. So, wait, wait, the, so the rules of the debate, and I'm going to stick to the rules, are that the members of the panel now have James in the dock for three minutes. At once everyone on the panel has made the argument, you get your turn. Wait, let me make my turn no. and they can answer no. my turn. No. 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 Wait, like everyone else, come on, they're the rules of the game. Don't break the rules of the game. Would the members of the public please respect the debate team on the panel and hold their peace? Thank you. Where did that disembodied voice come from? Thanks very much, disembodied voice. Um, James, so, can I you add? Have three add minutes, yes, thank you. So, so you're in the dock. So the, the first question is, um, you may, you, it may well there is 
certainly space to talk about um, what the what the solutions should be. Mm. But um, do do you actually think that there's a problem? I mean, do you think that there is actually a global warming problem? I think that there are um, some serious problems in the world that do need addressing. I suppose one of the big ones is water. Um, I think another one of the ones is overfishing. Uh, I think what happened in, in the Grand Banks is, is, is terrible, and I think we're in danger of doing the same in the, in the North Sea. Um, I think one of the problems with this issue, uh, climate change, is that it has distracted from the real problems that we face today. I, I, I think there are environmental issues. I don't think that man-made global warming is, uh, is one of them. <laughs> Any other questions? I just want to uh, uh, come back to something you said earlier, and it was a very impassioned uh, plea to not make personal points yeah. and not um, uh, and not get uh, kind of ugly with the debate. Yeah, I just it's a bit tough to take, to be honest, given that um, on a recent uh, interview uh, on the, uh, oh, it's a guy called Anthony James on, on I think it's Anthony James, you refer to Pachuri, the head of the IPCC, as an ugly troll. Mm. <laughs> and that you have repeatedly called uh, climate scientists uh, climate Nazis. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, is this something? Is this something? Your yeah. rules? You're just implying no, 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 to no, this no. debate, yeah. or just generally? I, I, I get question. Yeah. No. I. 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 I thought you were going to say that. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I think I actually called him uh, Pachari a a bearded uh, yogic cricket loving. Um, soft pornographic uh, writing uh, bearded troll uh, and uh, that is certainly true um, also I, I certainly have uh, have referred to um, hardcore uh, environmentalists as eco Nazis um, I think it's very important to draw a distinction between uh, uh, accurate <laughs> accurate accurate ad homes and inaccurate um, I think if my if my argument if my case uh, against Dr. Rajendra Pachari rested solely on the fact that he was an author of uh, pornographic literature and had a beard, my case might be pretty flimsy. Uh, one wonders why you have to go there. No, no, sorry. But time up, guys. We we'll have to come back to this one. I, I um I'd love to I'd love to take this one further. It's quite fun. James Ellingpole, thank you very much. <laughs>